thanks thanks for being here it's a pleasure to meeting you and being able to talk to you <laughs> yeah it's a pleasure to to be here with you so thank you uh, congratulations for your new coming album uh, head above the water i yes. i really like i really like that and and i thought that it's a very mature CD comparing to the two previous uh, albums i think this is uh, more mature like in sound composition the songs even in your guitar playing uh, could you Thank tell you. me how how was uh, the process of the creation of the album so for this album it was a bit different from um, uh, the two uh, past albums uh, mostly because um, when i um, came up with the um, the riffs and the and the songs i was not with the band Uh, I was uh, I spent a lot of the lockdown <laughs> the, the the past months uh, in Portugal near the ocean and uh, trying to um, gather some ideas some riffs um, some material and then once I had uh, almost everything or at least a general idea um, on the, all the, of the songs um, when I came back to Paris we um, we gathered with the band in the rehearsal studio and started a uh, arranging everything but yeah this album is really different in this sense that i was away uh, mostly uh, most of the time of the creating process so the all the compositions are are your own compositions and you start everything right yes mostly uh, um, for sure the guys uh, brought some ideas mathieu brought some guitar riffs sometimes Uh, Adrien was kind of free with the bass lines. Then we validated uh, everything together. But uh, yeah, um, the the big difference is is this: is that I mostly worked uh, um, just on my own, and then we arranged everything together. And uh, I think it went uh, really well this way. So I'm happy with the result anyway. Yeah, you should. It's it's great. Mm -hmm. And what about the lyrics? Do you first start with the music and then just put up the lyrics, or sometimes you have some ideas in mind and just start with the lyrics? Uh, most of the time, it's really starting with a guitar guitar riff uh, because I considered myself uh, more as a guitarist than a singer. So it's really hard for me to come up with the lyric first. Uh, that's not really my thing. I'm always starting with what I feel um, the more com comfortable playing. And what's coming first is always a guitar. I think, yeah, almost always, always a guitar riff. So it's kind of the same process as, uh, as before. Okay, and I could see a video in YouTube that uh, you were in the studio and you were showing the studio. So, uh, for what I saw the video, you, you spent there like like two weeks with the band recording? Is that... Yes, exactly. We were in Brussels, in Belgium, uh, where we spent approximately um, two weeks. And uh, the studio is really, really nice. Uh, a lot of uh, cool vintage gear. The sound engineer is uh, perfect. Uh, Um, and uh, yeah, we had a really nice time. It was a lot of work. It was not holiday, and uh, we didn't have a, an, a, a, like unlimited amount of time there. So we had to know where we we were going. We didn't really have time to improvise or jam or like uh, in the old days where I think uh, bands were staying uh, maybe six months in the studio and could work whenever they wanted. I don't think right now, unfortunately, it works like this because the label is paying for a specific amount of time and you have to fit everything in this amount of time. But I think we managed well with the schedule. I had a really uh, specific schedule for every day. And uh, in the end, we managed this way. Okay. And as you mentioned, uh, I guess you brought your guitars and did you try other guitars that were in the studio or pedals, amps? Uh... Oh, no, I did. we didn't have time for this. We had to be prepared. So um, the guitars, I always feel more comfortable if I'm playing on my gear and I, I love them. So I, I uh, except if I was looking for really something specific that I didn't have, um, I would uh, always prefer playing on my instruments. Um, and But for the amps, uh, they had really uh, cool gear and vintage uh, amps. So yes, I, I, I knew I was looking for different tones on certain songs. And I would need something else that what I usually use on stage. So for the guitars, I use my own. For the amps, I used a lot of their stuff. Uh, and for the pedal, pedals, I try to limit myself too because their uh, warehouse with the gear is huge and you can lose yourself and spend the entire days to try the gear. And we didn't have time for this. So yeah, I tried to uh, limit 
limit this and uh, just uh, use the, what was really necessary. And I read that uh, Ted, Ted Jensen, who worked with Eagles and some other cool, great bands, uh, was, was mastering the album. How important yes. was that in your sound? I was really, really happy because for me, I don't know, it's an honor to be uh, able to work with him. And uh, he's kind of a legend. So, uh, and I, we heard, so we, of course, we, we listened to the, the mixes before the mastering and then we, we could recognize what we recorded, but he's kind of adding this special magical touch to um, the finished results and make everything um, pops, uh, pop out uh, better, like uh, uh, the results is more powerful and you don't really know what he's doing, but he's doing this. And in the end, I think it's a, I don't know, he had uh, his uh, special touch and uh, we're really, really happy with the result. We didn't have anything to say after this. It was what I was expecting, just our music, but better, you know. <laughs> That's nice. I was wondering, uh, that, uh, like uh, in the album, that I, I don't hear keyboards or, you know, or pianos. Uh, are you planning in the future to add, to add that to your sound or you just like the way? Yes. You So for the first time for this album, we uh, actually hired a keyboard player because on some songs that were a bit softer or different style than what I was previously playing, I could uh, imagine some keyboards uh, or vintage organ parts. So um, we, we tried to, on there's, I think, three songs where you can hear, it's not uh, really uh, like um, really present, you know, the guitars are always going to be on top. But to add some uh, layers, I think it was really interesting. We, we added keyboards on a wiser, uh, old soul, and, um, and uh, let me think, wiser, old soul, and set me free. So on three, on three songs. And I think it, it adds something that's really interesting. And after this, we thought it would be good to, um, to hire a keyboard player for the stage too. So that's really something we're going to add uh, to our song, uh, our, our sound from, from now. No, oh, sounds great. I hear also you play a lot of banjo. That uh, I would like to know where the, where that it comes from. If you listen to a lot of country, bluegrass, or what, what are your influences? Yeah, and... but that's the problem with me. I love too many different things, <laughs> too many styles, and it's hard to focus on some things. So I I I love bluegrass as much as I love hard rock. And you have to find something in between so that I can create a, a, um, a musical identity. But yeah, I've been learning and playing banjo for a few years. And that's something I really want to develop in the future. Uh, the banjo, like I really love uh, bluegrass instruments. Like uh, on this album, on a few tracks, I played banjo, lap steel. Um, and yeah, that's really something I want to keep on doing to add this uh, kind of a spe special bluegrass or country uh, touch to our rock uh, tone. I would like to talk about your, your beginnings with guitar. Um, mm -hmm. I think you, you, you started uh, becoming very known in, in, in social media and like YouTube, uh, like very early. And mm -hmm. I would like to know, uh, I mean, I think you were in the process of still learning and getting better at, at the age when you were 17, I think. So yes. how, how did you start learning guitar? You had teachers, you just learned from the internet. How was... Yeah, a bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, I started, I think it's important to have a teacher if you really want to get into guitar because uh, when you're alone, learning alone, it's really uh, easy to just lose the motivation because you're, you, you're not really progressing fast. Uh, you, so if you find a good teacher, I think that's a really, really good thing. And I was lucky to find uh, someone that was motivating me to play uh, to play and to play again and again. Um, so yes, this is a good start. And then after a few years, I felt like I was able to um, practice on my own and work on my own. So I took some lessons the first four years of um, playing guitar. And then I, um, I thought, okay, there's a lot of uh, content on YouTube and tutorials or even not tutorials, but just uh, slowing down the music and trying to learn by ear. I think it really... Um, develops your ear it's really really good so i am um, yeah so i i learned with a bit of everything what i had uh, well yeah what i could find mm -hmm. i think uh, your generation there's not so many uh, people that play instruments so uh, at that time you were able to get a band with friends and play or you mostly play at home so 
I, uh, when I started playing guitar, I mostly played alone at home, but it was not because I couldn't find anyone else. It was just because I was a bit introverted. And at the time I felt more comfortable just playing guitar on my own in my bedroom and, <laughs> and just uh, being alone. I, I, I kind of uh, liked it. I was uh, yeah, a bit introverted. And, um, and then I think um, trying to op open myself by um, shooting some videos and then uh, posting this on YouTube was kind of uh, yeah sharing this with uh, the people and uh, but being able to kind of play on my own but uh, having uh, external comments uh, to help me and to keep me motivated was a good uh, solution for me at least for the first uh, for the first years I think so the band uh, where I'm playing I'm currently playing the Laura Cox uh, project was a uh, created eight years after I started playing guitar, which is really late. <laughs> but yeah, I think before I wasn't ready. Yeah. And how did you manage uh, the situation? Because I guess that that you probably just went from playing home and doing videos to, to play with a band. And, and I, probably there was a lot of people in your concerts when you started, right? Because you were already known. So That was a bit of a uh, that was a bit of a pressure for me because I thought I I never played live I never had any band, but I already have uh, a lot of views on my videos I think I already had a uh, several million views um, so I was a bit stressed by this uh, thinking okay am I going to manage the stress this is really new for me some people are expecting a lot and I don't really know what they're expecting so I had a lot of questions regarding this. But in the end, and there were not a lot of, because I think on YouTube, the people that are mostly watching my videos come from everywhere and mostly in the United, United States, I think. So when I started playing guitar, uh, playing live shows around Paris, uh, so in, in France, there was, uh, I didn't have a huge community in, French, in, in France at the, um, at, the, at the beginning. So no, there were not uh, thousands of people coming to the show. Um, and in the end, with time, with the months, we developed a kind of a, a fan base coming to the shows and I became more and more comfortable playing on stage. And I'm just curious, uh, with all that process, uh, at, at, at which point did you realize that you were going to be able to make a living out of music? And just before that, what you were thinking to study or to do like as a mm -hmm. job if... Yeah, so I didn't think I would be living from this. I thought I would be, because at the time um, um, when I was uh, kind of in between YouTube and starting the band, I was, um, I was working in a music shop near my place. And I thought, okay, if, I, if I'm not making it uh, in the music uh, scene, it's okay. I can sell guitars. <laughs> and as long as I'm surrounded by guitars, it's going to be okay. So I was doing this. And then um, I met my uh, manager, Booker, who told me, I think I could book you enough shows so that you can live from this. And we tried and it, and it worked. So yeah, I'm really uh, grateful for this. Yeah, that, that's great. <laughs> um, uh, about the, just talking a little bit about the media, do you stay in touch with other like big uh, guitarists uh, that are huge on, on social networks or? Um, a bit. Uh, it's, it's funny because... Uh, I'm in touch with some people on the on the on Instagram, for example, and sometimes we cross each other at uh, at some shows or at the Nam uh, Nam show, you know. And uh, when I went, so I um I know that I'm uh, sometimes. So I really love the new blues rock scene, and uh, there are some artists that I love, like uh, Tyler Bryant and the Shakedown, uh, Jared James Nichols, Blues Fields. Um and these artists, I I'm in touch with them, and I really. I really, uh, yeah, I, I really love the fact that now the new generation is really uh, accessible. It's not a uh, big, big rock stars that could, that unreachable, and you can easily uh, exchange about your passions and and just uh, cross uh, your favorite uh, stumble upon your favorite artists in some festivals you're playing. So I really love this aspect. Well, you just remind me uh, two days ago. <clears throat> The, the Black Crows were playing here in Madrid and, and the opening band was The Wolf. I don't know if you know them. I saw them in Paris a few... Uh, yeah. I saw The Wolf and The Black Crows. Uh, they, they were in Paris uh, in Octo on October 5th. So I, I, I saw them too. Uh, yeah, so I got good. the chance to, to interview them, The Wolf. So they were very nice ah. guys. Yeah. 
And we played and with was, them at a festival. Yeah, three years I, ago we played with them. And I was asking them if if they felt that that the seventies rock music are, is coming back because there's like few artists that doing this music and start working. Do you think seventies rock is gonna come back or? Yeah, I think it's kind of coming back. Maybe it's never gonna get as huge as it was um, a few uh, like in the seventies, or because I think rock was really huge in the, between the seventies and the nineties, and now we are kind of past this. But uh, yeah, there, there's kind of a revival, like a new bands uh, that are keeping this uh, '70s vibe alive, and it feels so good. At uh, because uh, the Wolf they managed to do this really, really well. You know, you feel really uh, in the vibe. Uh, you don't, you don't feel it when you're watching them live. You, you're not thinking, okay, they just like they're just looking that like they're wearing costumes and uh, and uh, and. But no, you you feel really. Uh, connected to what they're sharing to the to, to the atmosphere to the to the um, the period of time the 70s they're really doing this well so i think there's a small revival yeah that's nice i was thinking uh it was you will know like M M matthew zasato you know the guitarist yes. intern yeah you know that he went out of the social networks and he said that he was tired of just having and recording like one minute uh, videos for Instagram mm. and he wanted to to play live music. I was wondering now that you're starting with your, your musical project, three albums, uh, starting making gigs, how, how do you feel about social networks? You feel you're gonna lay down a little bit on the side or you you're gonna be very active still posting things? So I've been uh, really busy with uh, my band uh, for the past uh, four years, four, four or five years, and I kind of neglected the social media part, uh, but I think I should get back into it. And uh, because we saw, for example, if there's another pandemic, I know that YouTube is going to be there, Instagram is going to be there, and I know I have a huge community on, on there, so I should really take advantage of, of this and post more content. But I agree with, like you were saying, music doesn't, the point of music is sharing the real thing on stage with real people and posting uh, posting content on really short content on, uh, on social media. Sometimes you're missing the, the, the point of this, but I think it's a great thing. If you don't have the, the chance to, uh, to uh, be able to see these artists live, at least that's something you can, you can, you can have, you know? So I think you both are compatible and uh, you should be able to use the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking uh, right now, uh, uh, female guitarists like yourself, Larry Basilio, some big guitarists are probably icons for many women around the world. And how proud do you feel? And do you feel like pressure for this? Or mm, I'm really happy because so first of all, for me, I think it should be should it be a matter of gender. Uh, electric guitar should be accessible to. Uh, to uh, little girls, to little boys, and they shouldn't ask themselves, uh, uh, am I capable of doing this? Uh, is it something uh, that just boys should uh, should play? And uh, I think I had the chance to grow up where, uh, in an environment where it was possible. I didn't even ask myself, uh, am I able to play this? For me, it was natural. And, my, um, and I didn't really need a female role model. I learned with Slash and Mark Knopfler and Joe Bonamassa and it was okay. But I think some young women and young girls need um, a woman role model in order to understand that they can do it. So yes, I kind of feel like, uh, uh, I, and I, I, I'm happy to, to be this person for some people. It's really flattering and I hope I'm showing a good example. But yes, women can do it too and we shouldn't even question this. This should be a, natural and I hope I know that this is evolving in the right direction and I really hope in the in the future it's going to be even more and more young women started uh, starting playing acoustic or electric guitars uh, yeah no matter the gender well uh, I'm a guitar teacher myself and and I can tell you that right now I think uh, almost half percent of my students are little girls uh, ah, so I, I think right now there's a lot of girls getting into the instrument I think the problem we have now is that Uh, rock and guitar is not very present in music today, like the mainstream music. And I think the problem is yeah. it's difficult to get young people to get hooked to guitar playing. Yeah, 
electric guitar because there's not so much electric guitar playing in the, in the music today. So yeah, it means that they have to listen to something else, but they're going to, I'm sure in like modern music, like uh, Dua Lipa, Maroon 5 and things like this, I'm sure you can find guitar parts. So I know some people that are playing these kind of music like uh, on electric guitar. So it should be possible to uh, rearrange or everything is always possible. But of course, for me, what draw, what drawn me to, um, electric guitar was uh, because I was listening to rock music and this instrument is really present. It's uh, the first thing that comes to my ear. So um, that's why I started. But of course, if you're growing up now and you're a child or a teenager, naturally, when you turn on the radio, that's not really what you hear, the, the rock song. So maybe the guitar is not the, the, um, the first instrument you're going to think about if you want to practice something. Yeah, you mentioned Dua Lipa, and Dua Lipa has like a tiny desk, uh, like concert in, in YouTube, mm. and, and she's playing, she's singing with a bass player and a guitar player and some drum loop, and it sounds great, but I don't know mm. why it seems that always in the productions, like like there's many artists that they, when they go live, they use very organic musicians, guitars, everything, but when they, they do the albums, it's just like everything is just synths and programming. And yeah, yeah. I don't really know so much about this scene, so it's hard to talk about this, but at least live they're using musicians. So it's a good thing because they could just use samples for the live. And uh, yeah, I, I guess it's good that at least they're using musicians for the live part. I would like to ask you, which are your favorite guitarists of all time that uh, you were? Uh, when I started playing guitar, I had three uh, role models, like yeah, Mark Knopfler, um, Slash and Joe Bonamassa. And I think they really helped me in the way I learned the guitar and uh, by learning their solos and slowing down the songs and the right hand technique and uh, things like this. But now I'm a bit less interested in this kind of music and I'm more into, yeah, the, like, like you said, like kind of the new vintage rock scene, like The Wolf, uh, Blue Spears, Rival Sons, uh, uh, Blackstone Cherry, uh, Blackberry Smoke, uh, bands like this, you know, that don't really have a, a big guitar hero but a uh, really, really good style and songwriting. I, uh, right now, that, that's what I'm listening to the, the most. Okay. And uh, with all the new musicians that are coming, uh, have you plans to, to collaborate with anyone or you, do you wish you would collaborate with anyone special? Um, yes, we will see in the future. For now, on this album that's going to come out in January, there's no collaboration, but that's something I would really like doing in the future. Like, I still have big dreams, like, you know, having Sheryl Crow so, sing on one of my songs or something like this, or, um, or yeah, or Slash play, play a solo, or there are a lot of things that I, I could imagine, but um, yeah, for now, we, we didn't have the chance to, to have this on uh, the, this album. Well, let's hope you, you can finally get it. <laughs> yes. Uh And uh, most most teachers, even famous teachers, at some point of their life, they they do some teaching, even, like even if it's in videos for internet or, or they put like their methods, books. Uh, are you planning on something like that? Uh, yes, because uh, for the past years, a lot of people are asking me, not really lessons, because I, I don't have the, I'm not a good teacher <laughs> and I don't really <laughs> like doing this. I prefer... I prefer yeah, playing on stage or playing for myself, but teaching guitar is not really my thing. But I was thinking of releasing, for example, um, a tab book of uh, some of my songs and solos because I know some people would be interesting. And that's not really teaching guitar. It's uh, releasing a cool, uh, cool book with uh, yeah, some, some tabs. And, uh, so this could be uh, something I would do in the future. Oh, that's nice. And, and I guess, do you live in France, right? Yes, I'm in, near Paris. Yeah, and um, I would like to know uh, how is the music scene in France? If you think if that would be better for you, move to somewhere else, or you just like being there and you like the music scene there? The rock scene is not uh, so, I wouldn't say it's in existence because there's rock music, but yeah, it's not so big. But um, I think we, so these past years, we've mostly been touring in France. So of course we build a, a strong fan base there. So now I think we, yeah, we are able to tour all year uh, in France and also uh, yeah, Spain, uh, Germany, uh, the UK a bit. Um, we've been to Italy. 
and um, to Poland. Um, but yeah, I guess being in France, uh, we started there, so it's not a bad thing to uh, to to stay because we to stay there because I already have a, a strong fan base there. But I can um, I, I notice every time we're going, yeah, just even not so far, just Spain, uh, Belgium, or Germany, that we notice that the rock scene is much bigger. Um, so yeah, it's always a pleasure to come play in these countries. Um, and we're not so far, so I don't think it's a it's a big problem that I'm not living there because I, I still like my country even if uh, rock music is not so present. Uh, but I would like to try. We've never been. We never played to the U.S. Um, so far, and that's something I would really like to to do in the future. So hopefully, with the release of the next album, that's going to be a worldwide release. So this could help um, trying to find some gigs in the U.S. for the first time. And I will see. Uh, we'll see where we're going with this. Yeah, I'm sure you will go to play the U.S. Mm-hmm. I'm convinced. <laughs> yeah, <that'd> be nice. <laughs> and and. Have you thought uh, to do like uh, maybe one day an album in French, which uh, would work there? But some people are asking about this, but for now, I really don't uh, feel like doing this because uh, all the music I'm listening is uh, uh, music that's uh, sang in uh, in English. So for me, rock music is kind of uh, has to be uh, sung in English, and it's hard to imagine myself because the when you're singing um, rock in French, it's always, it either is really political and really angry rock and roll or really poetic. Um, and there's nothing in between. Uh, the kind of rock that I like is really like a, uh, no, like a chill, no, no uh, serious topics, uh, but not really too poetic, um, like a rock to party to, you know? And we don't really have this in... Um, in France, and so it's really, really hard to write uh, rock in, in French, I think. So for now, that's not something I would consider, but maybe, of course, maybe I can change my mind uh, in the future, or maybe start with like one song in French on the whole album could be a good start. But for now, that's not something I would uh, consider. Yeah, I think the same happens here in Spain and, and with uh, uh, other Spanish rock, like in Argentina, they, they, there are a lot of rock bands. But when you hear like rock in Spanish, at least is my opinion. Uh, yeah, it feels weird. <laughs> different than American rock or yes, English yeah, rock. For is... sure. Ah. For sure, for sure. Okay. Um, I, uh, okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, yeah. I would like to talk a little bit of, of your endorsements. Uh, do you have like uh, your own guitar model, right? Can, can you talk us about? Um, yeah, so I don't have my model, I'm, but I'm currently playing uh, Gibson guitars. I love them and I'm going to keep on playing them for a while. Uh, mostly playing Gibson Les Pauls. Uh, uh, my main guitar is a Gibson Les Paul Classic and a Gibson Les Paul Junior. And I really, really love them. So yes, that's, uh, that, that's kind of my identity uh, tone-wise and even visually on stage, uh, always with the Gibson. Okay. And um, I read that you are left-handed, but you just start playing right-handed. Is that possible? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm left-handed, but I think there are a lot of people that are left-handed but are playing right-handed because for me, it felt natural to have the left hand on the fretboard. I thought, okay, the this is my main hand and the main hand should be on the fretboard. Maybe this was a, a mistake, but I started learning like this, so I'm not going to change right now. No, and no. Uh, and I, I don't know, I feel more comfortable like this. It's just that now my right hand is a bit slow and lazy, but I guess it's normal. But uh, yes, uh, and I think there are a lot of, um, maybe half of the people that are left-handed play, play guitar uh, on the opposite side. Like I know Mark Knopfler is like this. I know Joe and Jet is uh, also left-handed playing right-handed. So this is, this is not so uncommon, I think. Yeah, no, it's not uncommon. And, and, I, and I, I'm a lefty guitarist too, but ah, I play okay. lefty, but... Ah, d'accord. Yeah, for, but mm-hmm. for my students, when they start, for some of them, they feel more comfortable like in one position oops hold on okay and some others like for me when i got my guitar uh, i felt comfortable like like 100 even without playing but some people they just equals 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it depends. But I think, yeah, so if you don't really care, I guess it's good to take the right, the right handed way because the guitars are cheaper and, uh, and easier to find. <laughs> <laughs> Like you mentioned that you maybe are you coming to play to Spain? Yes, for sure. I don't have any uh, specific schedule in mind uh, for now, but uh, for sure next year with the to promote the the third album, we're gonna come back, uh, and I hope soon, uh, at least before before the summer for sure. Oh, that's gonna be great to see you here. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, we are always we always have a nice welcoming. Nice weather, the sea, the ocean, <laughs> the you don't know, the it's food. really nice. Uh, and the, the so I have to say the food because I'm vegetarian in in Spain. It's really hard. Like I, I only have uh, I'm spreading the message because it's always if you're a vegetarian in the gas station or restaurants, it's just fried eggs and potatoes and patatas bravas. And I'm so tired of this. I wish they could have something else. But other than this. Uh, because I know when you're not a vegetarian, the Spain, uh, the food in Spain, I think it's really good. But this is the only thing I have to complain about. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> other than this, I'm really, really happy to come to to Spain. And and you're vegetarian, and and you are involved in in uh, I don't know how to say in, in in the animals rights. In yeah, in... I think that's just being vegetarian is a small thing that I can do to help the environment and the climate change environment and even for the body i think it's better so yes i i, I like this way this way of life okay great mm -hmm. and wh what are your your plans in the near future uh just so doing gigs or you're still you're already yes. working with the next album uh i think so this time because the previous album was out in november 2019 and uh I think for me, it was too long, the, the period between 2019 and uh, early ja next January. It's, uh, it's too long. So I know I, I want to record something, uh, uh, the fourth album soon, at least not three years between the, the albums. So I'm really motivated now. Every time I'm going to have an idea, I'm going to record and we'll see when we have enough material to, to go in the studio. But this is going to be, uh, yeah, something I'm going to yeah, focus on in the next months. But now the priority, yes, is to promote this album, uh, record promotion, video clips, uh, tour as much as possible uh, next year. Um, and, uh, and I think I want to put more effort and more content on the social media that I kind of neglect, neglected these past years. So I want to be more present on YouTube, for example. I, I know I could uh, do so much more with this. So this is one of my uh, goals for next year. Nice. And are you practicing a lot? And um, if you do, what? How is your practicing routine? What? Do you I don't have a, so I don't really I don't have a exercises that I'm doing to warm up or anything. I'm mostly at the moment I'm practicing for the shows because we are we have a new set with a keyboard on stage, a keyboard player that's new. So we have to rearrange the songs. So I'm practicing a lot the new arrangements of the song, of the songs, and I'm uh, in, uh, introducing the lab steel on stage. So, um, so yeah, I have to practice uh, playing lab steel and being comfortable playing this on stage. Uh, so that's kind of a challenge for me. So at the moment, that's what I'm practicing. The lab steel is just uh, here, sitting on the couch and wait, waiting for me. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> I'm sure you will yes. be great. And what, what about the gear you, you, you used to carry on your tours, on your gigs? What, what are you carrying with you? So we decided to um, reduce a bit the, the amount of gear we were touring with because it was a lot carrying big, big amps. We're changing the setup a bit. For now, it's still a bit uncertain. I'm not sure what amp I'm, uh, amps I'm going to be playing um, next, but I'm looking for new tones. I'm trying new things at the moment. And um, so I'm really excited about this. I'm searching for new, new tones uh, and we'll, we'll see where it, where it goes. And for the, the guitars, I'm, I'm uh, using the same. I'm, um, I'm touring with my Gibson Les Pauls. Um, the lap steel is coming with us. Uh, we have the keyboard, the drum, like a classic rock equipment. But uh, yeah, it hasn't changed so much, but we are working on a new set, stage setup at the moment. Yeah, but about the tones, uh, usually guitarists, we are always looking for the perfect tone and probably spend our life looking for that. But yeah. um, When I hear your, your new CD, I, I really like love the, the guitar sounds. D do you feel you are near to the sound you're looking for? I think so. At least it's uh, 
closer to what I'm expecting. Uh, in the studio, I, I used a uh, yeah, I used um, a lot of their amps that they have vintage uh, amps that they had uh, on site, and uh, that motivated me to um, try to find new tones for the stage too. So um, so yeah, and I think I really realized this in the studio trying uh, new things. So now I'm. Uh, on a new quest, <laughs> going out <laughs> on, in Paris uh, in music shops to try new amps and try to see what I like, what I don't like, what could work well with this pedal or this pedal. So hopefully soon I'm going to have more answers <laughs> with this. Well, I hope you share them in the, in the media. Yeah, for sure. Because yeah, people, yeah. people love to, <laughs> to hear what... Yeah, I know. People that love uh, like... Uh, pedals and gear and uh, I love it too so I'm just trying to be sure about what I'm using and once I, I know I'll let you know for sure <laughs> that's great uh, I want to ask you about the the lockdown and the pandemic uh, how was that in how did you live that in France and uh, are you so, in Portugal right you said yeah yeah how at the Portugal? beginning so the first lockdown I wasn't I stayed in France and I thought Okay, it's, uh, so we are canceling the shows that we have, and at least I can have more time to write for a new album, to practice a lot of things that I didn't have the time to do. But after one or two weeks, I, uh, I was already going in circles in my place, and uh, I was kind of going crazy. So it was uh, funny that, yeah, maybe the first two weeks I could practice a lot, and then I really needed to go out and do something else. So I used to go maybe once a day skateboarding outside, trying to change, clear my mind. And then for the second lockdown, um, the winter 2020, uh, yeah, I went to Portugal, surf a bit. And because at that time in Portugal, they weren't in, into lockdown. So I could, uh, I, I thought to myself, I'm not going to celebrate my 13th birthday alone in my apartment in Paris. I want to be near the ocean celebrating in bars and uh, like uh, restaurants because everything was open there. So at least I wasn't alone uh, in my apartment for this. And um And yeah, so um, it, uh, yeah, it made me like uh, a bit breathe uh, and um, focus on other things uh, until uh, the music scene um, was kind of reopening. It was nice to, uh, to spend a uh, time uh, closer to nature. Uh, about the, you said you're vegetarian, but do you like wine? Because French, you have very good wines in France. I prefer beer, but yes, oh. I like wine too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, I, I love more. beer. You're more of a beer. Yeah, I saw I saw in YouTube in the studio that you were grabbing your your hidden beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Always in the 20 minutes in the fridge uh, in the freezer before. That's my rule. And uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think uh, Zoom is telling me we only have one minute thirty, so I think it's gonna close. I don't know why. Okay, okay, okay. But thank, thanks a lot so, for so having me, and uh, I hope, uh, it, hope it, we can it, see it each was, other. Yeah, it was great talking to you. I really hope you come to Spain and and hope to see yeah, yeah for sure. Mm -hmm. and let's and if I can interview you again, that would be great. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thanks a lot and uh, have a nice day. We can stay in yeah, touch. You too. Very good okay. luck with uh, your new album. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank Take you. Care. Have a nice day. Bye. <laughs>